Hi everyone and welcome back to Business Communications. This is a quick video just to introduce you to what will be our final project for this semester. So great work on completing your business research project. You've done some research, both primary and secondary. You've created your charts and graphs and you've packaged all of that into a formal business report. What we're going to do now for our final application project is we're going to create essentially a marketing tool that gives information about what you learned in your research paper. So this will be a little bit of a continuation from your research project. But now what we want to do is we want to use some marketing tools. We're also going to use some of the techniques that we learned when we first started this course. We're going to use some of those techniques we learned in your personal brand. So creating a, a brochure or maybe a video, you, ha you have a lot of options here. But we're going to now take the material and information that you learned about in your research project, and we're essentially going to package it as if we were marketing it in the business world. So here's what we're doing. I call this the business application project. It's due at the very end of our term. So our semester goes until June 1st, but the very last day that you can submit work for my class is the end of May, May 29th. That's so that I have time to grade everything and post your grades. All right, so based on your research topic and your research project, we're going to create one last piece of business communication. Now you have a lot of flexibility here. You can do what is essentially a blog. You can um, create a video, a podcast, a pamphlet, which is sort of a longer, more formal, more formal version of a, of a brochure. You can also email me if you have questions. Now remember, this, this should be your original work. And here are some tips to consider. So who do you think will benefit from your information? I recommend that you use a problem solution format. So you're going to describe and define the problem. Now, the background information should be relatively straightforward because you just did that research, right? You can use some descriptive examples and again, make recommendations. This is the solution. And again, this should be pretty straightforward because hopefully when you did your research report, you identified a problem, you made some recommendations. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pass those recommendations on to a very specific target audience. So who will benefit from what you've learned? Here are a few examples, a few ways to think about doing this, um, this application. So for example, if you research student health, the problem might be defined as, you know, students would do much better at, at work and in school, they'd get better grades if they could just get enough sleep. So what are some of the causal factors? Well, students might be trying to work several jobs to make ends meet. They might be enrolling in a high number of units. So what are some of the suggestions that we might offer? Wouldn't it be great if we could lower tuition or often more scholarships and grants and thereby reduce the need for students to work full time? Another example, if you studied uh, student finance, you might want to create a blog. A blog is sort of like a little news article, but it's designed for a website. And you can go out to the internet and find lots of examples. Um, what are some tips that you have for students to save money? Blogs are also often written in this sort of problem solution format. So students have a hard time saving money or people have a hard time saving for retirement. This should sound familiar to you. Here's three easy steps that you can do to save more money. And then your blog would describe that. Or, you know, if you want to do more networking and business, consider these three easy networking tools, right? So that, that, that's how a blog is often written, but it, but it still has that problem solution 
uh, type of format. Now, I think a number of you wanted to research student health and, and student stress, and you're looking very specifically at this pandemic situation that we find ourselves in now. And so you might have recommendations for how the schools and students can work together to make sure that students get what they need. I mean, the, the, the campus, if you look at our website, if you look at our webpage, the campus webpage is actually a great example of a promotional piece that's giving information to students that said, you know, here's a problem. Maybe you need um, more financial support, or maybe you need help getting better access to Wi-Fi, or maybe you need, you know, some some help with with your student health. And you'll find on our website lots of resources for students. Those are practical applications. So the campus has done some research and we're putting that information on our on our website. So that's a good example. But you might want to make a pamphlet, for example, targeted to the college saying, here's what I've learned that students need and here's what local colleges can do to be more effective in assisting students. All right, so hopefully you get the idea of what we're trying to do. You've already done the heavy lifting. You've already done the research. Hopefully you're finishing up. You've done your, your research paper by now. And now what we want to do is we want to take all of that great research that we did and we want to make it practical and we want to apply it. So choose your structure and format consider your target audience, what we always do in business communication, what's the format we're going to use, who, who are we designing it for, use your problem solution format, and then really what we're doing is we're just packaging the information so that we can send it out to a more broad reaching audience so that, so that all of that information will find a good target audience. All right. That's your final project. Here's the rubric. It's only worth 35 points, so you've done most of the most of the work in our class already. I just want to say that it's been a pleasure working with everyone. I do wish we'd had more time in the classroom, but you guys have done great given everything we've had to manage and deal with. So thank you for that. Good luck with the rest of your semester. Always email me and stay in touch. I wish you well.